time has finally come for shelling corn. Yesterday while I was schooling, Grandpa was up here, got this 2388 switched over to corn. He shelled a little bit over there just to kind of get make sure things were set right. And ended up getting a trailer load yesterday. No more to cut, so. The corn's pretty good. I don't think my yield monitor is quite right, but I kind of wish it was. That's why. <laughs> I could only wish this thing feel more than making over 300 bushels per acre. Well, I may not quite get a trailer load, but it's going to be close. Well, I got those two patches done, didn't film over there much because, well, they're short rows and really boring. But we're out on the bigger fields now. This is just a little 12 acre piece here. Then I got 60 something acres over here. But uh, this is 65, 74 backs for the 74 family. And they speak very highly of it. It's won a lot of their plots in the past, so. We planted 65, 74, and 63, 74. This is the 65, and I wish my yield monitor was somewhat accurate so I could be able to tell. But if it is accurate, I'm not gonna complain because it is currently reading 264, which I'm not gonna complain about one bit, but I have a feeling it's not making that much. But it, it's making over 200 as fast as mine poppers filling up so that's a good thing definitely a good number of corn looks good it looked good all summer but we'll just have to see what happens when we get all the trucks loaded up and see how much corn we get off this piece that'll determine how good it was here for too long got the patch next to the road done we got Peterbilt filled Chuck set it out with that I got part of a hopper on the freight liner get these end rows off here there should be another set that goes all the way down that I can work on all that back there corn's doing pretty good like here I don't think I'll be able to make it back to the end about getting the hopper full. After we got two loads, or would have been one load, or one or two loads taken off that piece right there, decided to stop picking it because they started docking us for moisture it's 115 day corn so it still has a little too much moisture in it so start picking on this right here half of this field is 1222 pioneer and it's 112 day corn so it's drier running about 14 percent so that's under the mark where they start docking us so i start picking on it and uh at least we'll get it picked and probably pick that right there those done let that dry for a couple days because with the way prices are there ain't no sense in shelling wet corn and getting the dock it means this is dry we won't get a dock that's the smart thing to do so that's what we're gonna do
wants to fill a truck, gonna call it a night. Grandpa said fill it. Be done, so. So I'm gonna do. I don't know whether this opera will finish filling it. I don't think it will. I may just dump this opera and call it. Depends on what he wants to do. Okay, so fill the trailer. I dumped, but we had some more room, so I picked a few inners off that I went down and back, and this ought to finish it up. Yeah, it sprinkled a little bit, but not enough to really hurt us at this point. Taking the inners off, we brought the cart up here. That way, I didn't have to run back and forth across the field in the combine. Just leave the cart down here while I'm taking inners off, and I can dump it in. Chuck can take it up and dump it in the semi get these end rows off down here then I can start doing my east and west rows and I can just dump in the semi because one back one and one back ought to be about a full hopper the way this corn's been doing. I can make it about halfway if not a whole pass back down here but I can't make it back up there so just easier to go down and back dump do it that way. Chuck didn't make it back with the Peterbilt in time. Got the freight liner loaded because we've been running both combines, kind of getting a little extra shelled. And of course, we're with corn over 200 bushels per acre. They don't take on the field trailer, so I'm taking the freight liner off. Hopefully, Chuck gets back there. Grandpa's still got the cart up there to dump in, so he can keep picking. Fit about two hoppers in that cart, so that ought to be able to give him enough time or give Chuck enough time to get back. Hopefully don't run into a line down here. But I think from now on we're probably just going to run one combine. We may run two just to use one to take the end rows off. That way one combine can be going on the long rows. Kind of speed the process up. Two combines running on the long rows. Two trucks can't keep up. We're trying to think whether we want to hire somebody or see if we can't get a trailer in it and get a third truck in here. If we can find a, another trailer to run, even if it's a longer trailer, we can put the longer trailer on this truck or the Peterbilt and put our short trailer on the other freight liner. Because the tires on it, I don't trust pulling a long trailer, so we're going to see what's around, whether somebody around here has got a hopper bottom we can rent or may just hire one of these trucking guys around here to come in and haul for us. We'll just have to see how things kind of work out. But Well, got back from the elevator. I met Chuck on the way there right at the end of half on the 16. And uh, I got back. I'm starting to pick again. I found a spot to break through. I'm in the Bex corn right now. This is 75, 74 like we were picking yesterday. And it's, from what my monitor's reading, it's doing better than the 12.2 Pioneer. Which, there's a difference there because 12.2 is 112-day corn. Well, this is 115-day corn. But still, this corn's doing better. So this number is better than the other number, which longer season corn typically does better anyway. But... When I was picking the 1222, it was just barely over 200 bushels per acre is what my monitor treated. While this, on the other hand, yeah, this, which our Beck salesman, Michael, and Zach Nixon, his, I guess he's kind of the area representative or something like that. I don't know what his exact title is, but 
they said the 74 family is a good family of corn. So we got some 65, 74, and 63, 74. We should be able to get into some of the 63, maybe late tomorrow. We just have to see, but this 65, 74 is definitely a number I would buy again. I got 63, 74 reserved for next year. I may switch over and get to 65. Depends on how the 63 does compared to 65 whether a 115 or 113 day corn. Looks like I'm going to have another load to take off because I've loaded and Grandpa's unloaded into this. And this will be my second hopper and his second hopper in his truck. So this ought to fill it. If not, I'm going to shut my combine off. Let him pick down and back and finish it up. There's a lot of dang corn that's going to come off this farm. There's been a lot of it come off this farm already. Good year for corn. Now well, got that load dumped. About back to the field now. Chuck should almost be full. He can take that load off and I'll pull in and whatever grandpa's got left on his combine he'll dump. And I'll probably not even worry about getting in my combine. I'll just let him finish filling my truck. That way he kind of get the trucks a little closer together. Now I'm back in the combine. I'm running the 2388 because it has the 2208 corn head on it. And this Bex corn has a lot of leaves on it compared to the Pioneer and the old head just don't take it near as good because it ain't got chopping knives on the rollers so this could might as well just use the new head and save the old head in case we need it but grandpa he's running the cart at the moment Chuck he should be getting back here for too long with the Peterbilt got the freight liner about half full had to take off some more end roads down here that takes time taking end rows off so we're getting her though i say tomorrow we'll have this field pretty well whipped 